I feel like it was a positive change because Counter Strike Source seemed very clunky compared to CSGO, but 1.6 should have been what CSGO is now. Uh, the console updates that CSGO receiving seem to be quite um, repetitive. It's it's quite a frequent process. Um, like I don't feel people are having enough time to alter the way they play because most updates are like, completely game changing. So people have to relearn what they want to actually play as. Um, so I feel like they're just way too more frequent. Yeah, I feel the, the nostalgia from playing, like you go in competitive with your friends, you play the game and then you're all hyped up when you get upranked and things like that. Whereas now it kind of looks like an Overwatch animation kind of cartoony emblem and the realism of Cisco just seems to be decreasing, so I don't think it's a positive one. Uh, I feel like the online community of Cisco is way too salty, like there's people that think they're amazing at the game and playing, but then when they actually play they're really really bad, so they get really salty when you critique them, or even if you just want to try and help them and, and get their aim better as just a general player, and you say you mention like tap fire to them, they just get really angry with you. Personally, I don't think it was that much of a bigger deal that people let out. Um, a lot of people didn't really... A lot of people in the Cisco community knew about the betting scene, but a lot of people externally didn't know about it, so it was never questioned. But in terms of the underage kids that were, like, say, under 13, betting their skins, at the end of the day, it's just kind of like their pocket money that they used to buy skins to bet with. So it's not like real money where they could have got into trouble. They could only use the money that was already on their account, which is normally pre-approved by their parents or things like that. So I feel like it was overly dramatised, if that's the word you want to use. Um, but they could have changed it. They could have reintroduced it the same way, but the government just wanted to change it because they weren't making any money off it. Probably towards the end of 2016, there was a major change to the AWP and the AK spray. The AWP sounded more like a lightning bolt rather than a, an actual 50 caliber kind of like gun. Um, so the, the whole hearing change, because Cisco is mainly based on the hear of where people are, the game sounds, the gun sounds. So to have such a big change within one or two weapons, is like a big effect on the Cisco community, like a lot of people didn't like it. Uh, personally, the VACBAN system could be massively improved upon. I feel like it's an old uh, cheat engine, if you want to call it that. Um, it could be improved dramatically, a lot of people um, hate it. I like the fact that you're publicly shamed if you get VACBAN, but the way that the cheating is detected is quite an old method, so I think it could be improved. That's a difficult one because the fact that with the community it brings load off the actual Cisco developers so that they can continue developing the game and making updates, but at the same time if you're having the community doing the cheating uh, processing for them, then you're going to have people that just troll and want to ban people for no reason and they're not actually going out of their way. They're not actually helping the community, they're more of a hindrance because they're just banning people for no apparent reason even if they're not cheating. Or they're not skilled enough to detect if they're actually cheating or whether they're just a really good player. Uh, personally, I feel that the, the, the online uh, matchmaking process could be a lot better. Um, like recently they did make a new update that helped towards that but it's still not fully refined like in the UK there's no UK based servers so you're either connected to the EU West or the EU East and you're always paired with either Russians or someone who's Slavic or Latvian or something along those lines and a lot of the time they don't speak English or if they do they um, it's broken pidgin English so you can't really have the true competitive team-based plays that CSGO uh, competitive is all about. Again, touching on the last one where you 
uh, you're playing with Russians and things like that, a lot of them, because of where they're based, say like in Russia, they're in more of a rural area, they'll, um, they'll have really high ping. And I feel like if somebody's got high ping of say 100 to 120, anything over that, then it's, it's mainly affecting the players you are actually playing with because you're playing as a five man. Four people have got really good ping, which means there's no server lag, there's no, you know, what's happening is happening on their screen to the game server, but the person with the high ping, everything's behind or everything's too far forward. So when you're relying on that one player to actually get the kill to win the game for everybody, they can't do it and it's not really anything that they can fix. I think like they should be put in their own lobby.